So I have set myself a little challenge. I have decided to see once and for all how much I can read in 24 hours given that I will need to sleep and shower and eat. Although, you know, I can read and eat, I can read and eat. Um, so I know that 24 hour readathons have been around for a very long time. Getting as much reading as you can done in 24 hours is not a new concept by any means, but I've just been looking for fun content to make for my channel and fun things I can also do to distract myself at the moment and thought this would be fun. So my friend Jill and I are going to be doing this in tandem just to keep each other company and like stay in touch with each other from our respective homes and we're going to start this evening we haven't picked a specific time because our plan is that we will be watching uh, the Harry Potter quiz over on Anna James a case for books channel I will link that down below if you're interested she live streamed it a few days ago but we didn't get a chance to watch it so we're gonna watch it in tandem to challenge one another and see who wins I'll let you know both Jill and I are like massive Harry Potter nerds so I'm I'm not sure who's gonna come out tops but it should be fun and then whenever we're done with that we are going to start the clock and I will let you know what time exactly that is and from that time until exactly 24 hours later I'm going to be recording how much I can read so I'm going to keep a note of both the hours and minutes that I literally spend reading as well as the pages I manage to tot up so this isn't about like how many books I can read as opposed to like how many pages I can read but I have set myself a little bit of a TBR so that I can keep my focus and not waste too much time thinking about what I'm going to read and instead read and those are three books because they're all very very short and the first one is a novella published by Tor in their novella series and this is The Empress of Salt and Fortune. I am so excited about this book. It's set in a fantastical version of Imperial China and I believe there's queer elements. We follow a woman who has been married off to the Emperor and it's about her new life and the relationship she starts with one of the servants in the palace as well as um, learning to control some powers that she holds within her so a lot to unpack here but it just Oh, it sounds brilliant. It's quite a recent book to my TBR and I've been so excited about it that this seems like the perfect opportunity to read it. And it is only 120 pages. I then, on my Kindle, have two books I'd like to read. The first one is Mangoes and Mistletoe by Adriana Herrera and this is a contemporary romance novel about two women who meet and fall in love during a cooking competition in Scotland. So at least one of the women has travelled from across the pond to come to Scotland for that competition and she meets another woman while she's there and they fall in love and I think that's going to be like fun and fast paced. I do find I read romance much much quicker than other genres so that should be good. I then have The Order of the Pure Moon Reflected in Water by Zen Cho. Now this one isn't out yet. I got an e-arc from NetGalley but I'm so excited about it because I love Zen Cho's writing. I've adored everything I've read by her in the past and it's about 160 pages so fits in perfectly with this challenge. I don't know much about it other than like I said I'm already a Zen Cho fan but it seems like a fantasy novel that follows a group of thieves who have been tasked with transporting or protecting a sacred relic and although that is three books albeit novellas they come in at less than 450 pages in total. They come in at 432 all together and that doesn't seem unreasonable as a challenge to set myself. I wouldn't usually say that I read over 400 pages in a day but if it's literally all I plan on doing with my time then I feel like it's very possible. Of course I may um, change things up slightly as my mood mood progresses throughout the day and see what I feel like reading. Maybe I'll even manage to read more, that, that seems unlikely. Um, but that's kind of the TBR I've set myself to keep myself on track and I'm really just excited to kind of like really go for it. Of course like I said I am going to be going to sleep, I'm not really one for missing a night's sleep even for a challenge so that's why I also want to time how many hours within the 20 four hours I can manage to read for. So I thought I would just share with you this little introduction to the video and I'll get back to you in a few hours when the vlog officially begins.
would just do a quick update. I've already forgotten what time it is, but my Kindle should tell me. Um, it is 20 to 10, which means I've been reading for almost an hour now because we officially started the readathon at quarter to nine. Um, and I started with Mangoes and Mistletoe, like you should have seen. And at the moment, I'm 26% of the way into this book. I'd like to get at least 50% of the way through it before I go to sleep. I, like I said, I'm not going to stay up super late just for the sake of it, because I'd rather get up early in the morning and like have like a really full day of reading tomorrow. But I thought I would just sort of like let you know when we started, um, what I started with. Um, I'm enjoying it. I think I decided to go for this one because like I said I read romance so quickly um that it seemed like a good like fast-paced starter book um I do think though I need to not read books set in Scotland written by non-Scottish authors though because like already in this book has Outlander been referenced and I just it's just weird when like the most famous thing about your country and the thing people associate with your country constantly is a book and TV show that isn't created or written by a Scottish person and the main character isn't Scottish either. And it's just, it for like from my perspective, it's just like a bit eye roll worthy. So um, that like always takes me out of these things. But I think if I can ignore the fact um, that it's set in Scotland and those little like irritating references, then I'm going to enjoy this because it seems like a fun dynamic between the two women as well as like the added like ante of it being part of like a baking competition so you like don't know if they're gonna win they've been teamed up but it's a little bit antagonist antagonistic at the beginning of their uh, their their team ship so um you're obviously rooting for them and I'm sure it'll all work out nice because that's kind of what you get to expect from romance so yeah I'm gonna like I said at least get to 50% this evening but I probably won't vlog anymore because I want to just like sort of take my makeup off and kind of yeah just sort of like get ready for bed but I will check in with you in the morning. So it's the next morning and I finished my first book which was of course Mangoes and Mistletoe and I have to say what I found most interesting so far is how much time I've actually spent reading because it's less than I would have necessarily guessed. I stayed up till about 11 last night um, reading my book but I only read for about an hour and a half because I was timing it all on my phone so that means between like sort of getting ready for bed and fiddling around on my phone I actually spend less time reading than I would have thought I had if I just reflected back on the evening and thought oh well I must have read for like two hours um, and then this morning I spent like a further half an hour reading which means I'm at one hour and 59 minutes and 15 seconds currently whilst I was uh, drinking my coffee and finished off book one before I got ready and now I feel like you know I'm like ready for the day I'm going to do a lot more reading hopefully and really like commit to totting up the hours on this because I've only got until quarter to nine was it? Yeah so I mean that's still like more than 10 hours so hopefully I can read my other two books if I can read 150 pages or 152 pages in two hours but I would say I read this very quickly like I said romance is just a genre I read very quickly I think it just flows very fast so I would say that it felt like a quick read. It was cute and endearing. It wasn't like my favourite book of all time. I think I'm just realising that romance novellas aren't as much for me as like a romance novel. I, I prefer the space a novel gives you to develop a relationship, although they even still feel quite fast in novels. That's why it feels maybe too fast for me in a novella because everything has to happen so, 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 so quickly. But it was cute and it made me smile even if it was a little bit tropey in instances. So I'm definitely not displeased that I read it and I'm always looking for more like queer female, female romances, which I think are harder to find. So that was really excellent. Um, but I am going to be reading this book next, which is The Empress of Salt and Fortune. And I'm really, really hoping this is gonna be like a four or five star read because it sounds brilliant and I've heard brilliant things about it. So I am really, really excited and I should probably like stop talking now and just get on with my reading. <laughs>
I just thought I would quickly update you. I am more than halfway through The Empress of Salt and Fortune now and I'm really enjoying it. It's beautifully written, but in lots of ways it's not really what I expected it to be. So it's told from the perspective of the Empress's maid and companion, but like many, many, many years in the future. So she's an old woman now. And the Empress herself is exiled by the Emperor after she bears him an heir because he's like done with her. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens um, as the story progresses. Um, but I, I'm definitely going to finish this very quickly. Um, it's only taken me about 40 minutes to read 70 pages. So I have no doubt that like it'll have only taken me just over like an hour by the time I finish it, which is really interesting. However, I have done a few other things this afternoon. I filmed another video for my channel, which should be going up after this one. Um, and I'm just about to go and make myself some lunch now because I'm just not the best person at sitting down for like more than an hour at a time and just reading, which obviously isn't like the best when you're trying to read as much as possible in 24 hours. But I'm finding it really interesting timing myself and adding up exactly how much I'm reading even when I've given myself the day over to read it. So, um, so far I'm having fun. Like I said, I'm probably going to finish this very shortly during my lunch even maybe. And then I'll start on my next book and update you then. So I've just finished um, Empress of Salt and Fortune. This was a lovely little story, like super fast read, obviously, um, but just like really nice as well like beautifully written and a nice story with like little moments of intrigue and just sort of like interesting world building i'd assumed when i looked on goodreads because people had shelved it as like a queer novel um that it meant the two main characters the empress and her servant would be in a relationship but that was wrong and that was like just an assumption on my part that wasn't like the book or anything implying that w that was just like me like doing bad Sherlock Holmes sleuth work with the 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 way people were shelving it there's like a brief sort of queer element but it's not like a major part of the story it's far more about the friendship between these women and just like some sort of comments on kind of um patriarchy and um like sexist systems and it's just quite beautiful and quaint and uh, a nice story I, I don't know how quite how to pinpoint it but beautifully written and like really absorbing so I'm really pleased that I read this one um and now I'm going to start my third book but I don't think I'm going to read the Zen Cho book simply because I actually feel like reading something longer I think reading three books less than 150 or around 150 pages in a row is almost too much. I feel like I need a book that I'm going to spend more time with now. So I'm thinking of starting um, something a little bit longer, but I'll update you um, with where I am with that shortly. In total though, I've read 270 pages between those two books um, because this one, it turned out was 118, not 120. Um, and I'd like to get to 450 just because that's kind of like the mental goal I had at the beginning of this day so that would mean another 180 pages and I do feel like that's possible if I just sort of crack on with it so I best get to it. <laughs> So I decided, like I said, to go completely off TBR and I've been reading a book called Dragon Actually. <laughs> I feel like, is that name a pun on Love Actually? Maybe. By G.A. Aiken. Um, this is a dragon fantasy romance novel? Dragon shifter romance? I don't know, like, this is like a whole subgenre, if you're not aware, of romance literature, like fantasy romance with dragon shifters, so like people, usually men, who can turn into dragons and um, also have a human form. And I love dragons, like, I love dragons in fiction who are dragons, um, but because of that, ever since I filmed my video where I read Highlander romances, that subgenre, my friend Jens kept telling me that I should read a, a dragon shifter romance because I also love dragons. And I mean, that doesn't quite correspond with like, why I read the Highlander romances one, but you know what I mean, like sort of exploring subgenres of romance based on other factors. And I decided, hey, do you know what? That's probably something that's quite quick and fun to read, so I'll give it a shot. And this one was on um, script, like I mentioned. And I'm currently 154 pages in. I have been reading for a good while now, um, but it's also quite fast-paced because it is fa romance. Um, and it's also just, like, a bit silly. <laughs> I don't 
mean that in disrespectfully in any way, shape, or form, but I mean the premise and the subgenre itself. I feel like just lends itself to being a bit silly, <laughs> and um, it's kind of making me chuckle in moments. It's um, not my new favorite subgenre of romance, that's for sure. But I'm kind of glad that I'm trying it and like giving it a chance and sort of seeing what this whole this whole like I said, sub, like I said, subgenre is all about. So that's been quite fun, and I think the book is like two hundred and eighty pages or so. So I could probably read it all today since it is really fast paced. Although, can I read it all before quarter to nine? That's the question, because I'm going to be having my tea very very shortly. I'm going to go and make it, and then obviously eat it, etc. And um, I'm eating with my mum, so I won't be reading while I'm doing that. And then we'll see how much time I've got left to finish up my reading this evening. But I'm certainly going to read my 180 pages um, since I've already read 154 and it's just been like a bit of good fun. I do think like genre and the type of book changes how fast you read it, um, which is one of the reasons I, I pick these kind of books for um, the, the, the 24 hours. In saying that, I don't actually think I necessarily thought Empress of Salt and Fortune would be quite as fast to read as it was but I really enjoyed it so I'll kind of check back in with you once I have read a bit more of this either finished it or just hit the time limit and then um, kind of wrap up how much reading I got done in 24 hours <laughs> and that's time it is officially 8 45 which means I have been reading for 24 hours or I have at least spent 24 hours trying to see how much reading I can get done more accurately. Um, I haven't quite finished that third book but I'm on page 221 so I definitely read more than 450 pages that's 491 pages in total which is kind of awesome. I didn't realise I could read that in space of 24 hours. I also read for about six and a half actual hours which is interesting to me. It doesn't sound like that much when you think of it in the scheme of 24 hours but given I slept for eight hours, I ate, you know, multiple meals, I showered, I filmed a video, I like chatted with my mum, I went for my walk, I like did some other like bits and pieces. It seems like quite a reasonable amount of time. I probably wouldn't normally read for six and a half hours in the space of 24 hours if I was squeezing it in so often today and last night and still only read for six and a half hours. It's weird, because like, in my head, six and a half hours doesn't sound like that much, but I feel like I read a lot, and I feel like I spent a lot of time reading. So that's just kind of fascinating, really, from my perspective, to think about um, how much I read in that time frame and, and what I can read, and how much I would read in 24 hours, even if I'm like committed to reading. It would obviously be interesting to know how much somebody literally reads in 24 hours, but that, I mean, how long would that take me if I only read six and a half hours in 24 hours? Like a week, I guess. <laughs> Just about. So um, that's kind of like my takeaway. The The last book, like I said, I don't really have anything to follow up from my last update. It's just kind of like silly fun, isn't it? Like it's not terribly serious. I'm probably not going to carry on with this series, but I feel like I dabbled my toes in that subgenre and it's kind of fun to have like seen what it's all about. So I'm, I'm okay with that. Like I have no complaints. Um, and I don't know if there's anything else I needed to update you on. Um, I, I did have fun doing this because it was kind of just like fun to, to see how it affected my reading. Um, although I did think that maybe if I did something like this again or if I was just like challenging myself to like a 24 hour readathon again with a friend then I would maybe just try and read one really long book as opposed to reading lots of little books because I think I was more likely to take breaks in between them and just sort of like re having to readjust to different storylines whereas maybe it'd be nice to like tackle like a big like 600 page t tome that I'd been putting off or just wanted to like fully immerse myself in over the course of like a day and just like not come out of. Um, I think that would be quite nice as opposed to jumping around a lot and if you are interested because I said Jo was doing this with me she read 650 pages which is not surprising because she does read faster than I do 
um, and maybe spent more time. I don't know exactly how many hours she spent reading. So she beat me, but it wasn't a competition, so that's okay. And like I said, I just, I had fun. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I know it was pretty random um, and I will be back in my next video, which as I can tell you since I filmed it today is a challenge video where I had to see if I had specific books on my shelf and timed myself. So look out for that in the next few days. But generally speaking, just let me know more about your reading habits. How many hours in a day do you usually spend reading? How much can you read in the space of an hour? I'm kind of just fascinated by all of that just now. So yeah, I hope you're all getting on okay and I will see you all in the next one.